So today is April the 18th and today I am 11 years sober and I can't quite believe it. I am incredibly proud of this milestone um, bar having my children and uh, the amazing men they've turned out to be and the acquisition of my stepson. It's uh, the, the thing I'm most proud of. Um, you have to reach rock bottom, I think, in order to become completely sober. Um, Lincoln and I didn't go down the Alcoholics Anonymous route, which is a lifesaver for many people. It was just not for me because Lincoln and I pretty much got sober together. There was two months in between, but we got sober together. So Lincoln was 11 years in February and me 11 years today. And um, I put a post on Instagram, I do every year, but I put a post on Instagram with a sort of before and after picture. And I've actually had a few tears this afternoon because the response has been from many people that I know, many, many people that I, you know, people that I didn't even know I was on their radar, many people that I don't know. And it's been such an overwhelming outpouring of love and support that it's made me quite emotional. Even on Twitter, which is a cesspit, and where I'm used to being bloody trolled to buggery, you know, I am fairly outspoken about certain things, but, you know, you just get that's just where the, the trolls live. And in response to that tweet, I've had the most amazing response. It, like, everybody's really happy for me and... It's just been quite, um, it's been, it's been quite emotional, I'll be honest with you. Um, I had a message from my friend Casey Ainsworth, the actress Casey Ainsworth, wonderful actress, saying, I remember I was there because we were doing a tour of Steel Magnolias when I got sober. Um, listen, many people know my story, but um, Lincoln had given up alcohol two months before because I didn't like who he became this one night after alcohol and uh, and, and things and um, I said I'm not living with that person I'm not gonna I'm not gonna live with the person who that is who might come through my door not in a not in a violent way or anything just I didn't like who it was I liked the man I'd fallen in love with and uh and he was so scared of losing me. I get emotional. He gave up drinking that night. That night. And bearing in mind, we'd met in a nightclub at six in the morning that doesn't open till four. We were both functioning alcoholics. And uh, I, um, I was doing a play. I was doing a tour of Steel Magnolias. I didn't think that I had as much of a problem because I could do a play and, and, and I would only have a couple of beers at the end of a play and I wouldn't have any if I was driving and this, that and the other and I didn't think I had as much of a problem until two months later. We had a, a night when we were at Richmond Theatre or Kingston, Richmond and um, all of the cast, wonderful cast, Isla Blair, Sherry, um, Cheryl Campbell, um, Casey Ainsworth, um, Isla Blair, Casey Ains with Sadie Pickering, me. Um, who else am I missing in that? Anyway, I'm missing anybody. It's a wonderful cast. And um, very special women. And we um, we were doing a tour and we all got decided to get our friends in this night and we did. And I said to Lincoln... Say to me if I've had too much to drink because I'm doing two shows tomorrow and I don't want to get drunk. Fast forward to, darling, the paps are taking pictures through the window and you are getting a bit drunk. And I said, don't you tell me what to do. And that was the beginning of the end. And after which I don't remember very much except waking up in the morning, seeing my picture strewn across the front of a newspaper, the standard, the express, I don't remember what it was. And Lincoln stood fully clothed at the end of the bed and he'd videoed me. And I didn't want to see the video, but I looked around and I'd pulled the door off the hinges of the um, flat and I'd smashed a lamp and I had no recollection. None. Not one flashback. And um, 
Lincoln said, I'm going out. I'm going to come and get you from the theatre tonight and I don't want you to say a word. And I went in a car, throwing up, had to keep stopping and did two shows that day. God knows how, but, you know, Dr Footlights, the show must go on. I was in such a state. I felt depressed. I felt absolutely terrible. I thought that I'd ruined my relationship that we'd worked so hard on and that Lincoln had got so before. And I thought, I've blown it. And he picked me up that night and he spoke to me all the way from Richmond back to Kensington where he had this little flat. And he told me how much he loved me, how much he adored me, how much he would do anything for me. But it was going to be hard to live with me now that he was sober. And I didn't say a word. And he was still talking when we got back to Kensington. And we pulled up outside the flat. And he said, so I've decided that if we go out in the future and you have two glasses of wine, if you ask for a third, I'm going to leave. And I said, I can't do that to you. And he said, what do you mean? Hang on. (laughs) Sorry. Of course I've got a cold. Of course. And um, you think I'm a right hypochondriac. I know you do. I know you all do. I'm not, but you think I am. Um, And um, hang on. Oh, bloody hell. And I said, I can't do that, Lincoln. I said, I can't have you waiting home for me, not knowing who's going to come through that door. Which Denise is going to come through that door? The nice, loving Denise or the spoiling for a fight Denise? And I never touched a drop of alcohol from that day to this. And that was 11 years ago. And it has been the best thing I've ever done for me, for my husband, my marriage. We have a fantastic marriage. I nurture my marriage. I love my marriage. It's the bedrock of my life. For my children, for all of our children, Louis, Lewis and Matthew, because they can live their lives knowing that their parents don't drink. Matthew said I could never be in this amazingly successful band knowing that my mum was drinking and putting herself in danger. Louis the same, he has to work away from home. <sighs> Link, Louis never knowing where his dad was, you know. it. It's a horrible illness, addiction. It's a horrible, horrible illness. And, um, and all of the people who love me, my sister, obviously my parents, my one big regret in life is that my mum didn't live long enough to see my sober life. But she um, she died three weeks after I got sober. So I know that she knew that I was trying. And I remember my sister saying that the fact that you didn't drink when mum died showed me that this could be it. And, um, yeah. So it's been a journey because... Um, You know, people say, oh, maybe I should stop or, oh, I drink too much. The thing is, there's a big difference between social drinking and being an alcoholic, having a drink problem. And the way I analyse it by thinking, it's when you become powerless over alcohol is that you have a problem. The saying is, one is not enough and two is too many. If I could just drink on a Friday night, Saturday night, have a couple of glasses of champagne, go out for a night out, wake up a little bit hungover in the morning and go, oh my God, I feel terrible, but it doesn't matter because it was a brilliant night. So what? You're not hurting anybody. You don't turn into somebody else when you had a drink. I mean, I was never, you know, I may have pushed back and been not very nice to my family because they'd be the only people who said to me, you've got a drink problem and you get defensive. But to everybody I was out with, I was I was messy, but I was never a horrible drunk to people. Um, you know, I wasn't the, one of these people that completely have a Jekyll and Hyde personality and turn into somebody else. You know, I had a couple of friends who you knew that on their fourth drink they were going to turn into somebody vile and be vile to you about anything. Um, I, I never, I never was like that with 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 friends. And um, but I was destroying my life. And uh, and if you are making yourself so miserable so unhappy and making the people around you's lives miserable and unhappy that's when you should stop that's when it's not fun 
I'm not saying I didn't have some fun nights with alcohol. I've learned to forgive myself for it. And I've learned the difference between guilt and shame. So I can still laugh about some nights. Every night didn't end in disaster. I wasn't a drunk who went down to the Domestos cupboard in the morning and picked out a bottle of vodka and drank. If I drank in the day, it's because I was still drinking after the night before. But I still brought up two wonderful children. And, um, but it was, um, it was a toxic world that I, that I lived in and I put myself in. And the thing is, I never had a drinking problem before I was, um, before I had Matthew and had postnatal depression. I was a social drinker. You know, if I was going to do drugs, I would have done them in my early 20s when other people were doing them. I was in my late 30s. It wasn't something that was in my life. You know, I used to have a drink and, like I say, get tiddly with friends and wake up feeling a bit groggy the next day. And and, and so what? When I was pregnant, you have to stop drinking. Bob, maybe two glasses of wine in nine months. It never bothered me at all. Never bothered me at all. I think I was more bothered about smoking. I wasn't that bothered about drinking. So I was... You know, I was medicating uh, a depressive illness and those people with depression will know that um, you will do anything to stop the pain. And drinking and then subsequently drugs made me feel normal for a time and made me feel like I could deal with the depression. It would mask it and mask it and mask it and then the next day when the come down's happening, you just want to mask it again. You want to mask it again. Then it becomes, you feel you've lost your personality. You can't get your personality back and get less you're drinking and using. And it's, it's just such an awful spiral and a roundabout and a roundabout. And do I wish I'd stopped years earlier? Of course I do. Do I wish I'd found the strength? I did find, I did do it for a year and a half when I was doing Waterloo Road. But I thought then that it would, that it would stop my depression. And I had a terrible breakdown and I thought if I stop drinking, it'll stop my depression. But it didn't. So then I, I, I said, oh, I'm stepping off the wagon again, but I'll be fine now that I've had 18 months alcohol free. I'll be fine. Um, I'll be able to just, you know, have a couple and stop. Within four weeks, I was back to square one. Within four weeks and hid it for years. Oh, God. You know, it makes you tell lies. It's, it's an alcohol favorite saying the only drink you have to the only drug you have to apologize for not taking a lot of people don't want you to stop you get a lot of hangers on when you're a drinker you get into the you get into the places I was like the you know a joke about it the Pied Piper of Soho you start out going out with three friends by the end of your night you got 24 yeah I'll get your bloody drinks let's go to this bar I'll get you all in come on I'll get the drinks I'll make the phone calls I'll get all this you know oh my god it's just tragic um but you were with a lot of like-minded people, you know? And I was, listen, I was great fun sometimes. I was the person people wanted to be with a lot of the time, you know? But inside I was dying. I used to go out to a nightclub called Freedom. They had these sort of swinger pole things. I'd be dancing and everybody would be going, yeah, Dan, get Dan another drink. She's great fun. She's the life and soul. I'd be there till five in the morning. I'd be terrified to go to sleep because I knew I would, I would be so ill and I had to go to work and I'd go straight to work, often. I mean, I was in a right state. And, and then I'd, that was in London, and then I'd go home to Cheshire and try to be mom. Um, and I was mom. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I, to be honest, I just intended this to be... <laughs> To be a little thing about celebrating 11 years because it means so much to me to have the life that I do now and to have the people's lives that I love and who love me be able to go on without the constant worry and anxiety of where I am and what I'm going to do and what front page there's going to be. Because I was a target for the press. Did I always deserve it? No, I didn't. But they they would make me look like I was drunk even if I wasn't coming out of a restaurant, you know. I wasn't drunk all the time. Believe you me, I couldn't have survived. But it was um, it was a hellish merry-go-round for quite a lot of years that I just felt there was no end to. And um, I was so unhappy. And I just masked it all of the time. And, 
Yeah, it was but it was bad news. But to anyone out there struggling, you know, there is help. I'm incredibly lucky that Lincoln and I stopped together. I'm incredibly lucky to have the love that I have later in life. I cherish it. I really, really do. Um, and and I and I'm and I'm pr- and I'm proud of us. And we talk about it often. We'll be walking through Soho and we'll think, Jesus Christ, can you imagine? Can you remember when we used to walk through Soho? Not just together, separately, before we even knew each other. Looking at people doing normal things like going to normal work and going to normal shops and talking normal conversations. And we were still walking around from the night before wearing the, you know, the walk of shame clothes. And oh, God. Oh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting thinking about it, to be perfectly honest. But as I say, this wasn't kind of meant to be this chat, but it's 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 cathartic for me to talk about it. And I know it always helps people. I had a lovely message today from, from Michelle Heaton, who I don't see a lot, but we speak and we stay in touch. And Michelle was someone who is, you know, she's two years sober. I'm so proud of her because when Michelle was in rehab, I knew what a state she was in. And I spoke to her a lot of the days that she was in there and um, she was at rock bottom and it was really touch and go. And the fact that she's turned her life around and the kids have their mum back and the wonderful Hugh, her husband, has his beautiful wife back and the life that she lives now, it just... Sobriety is a wonderful thing. And as I say, I am not the drink police. Most of my friends have a drink and that's absolutely fine. As long as I can leave when they're on their third bottle, that's fine for me. But um, if people enjoy a drink, good luck to them. And, um, you know, do I ever wish God I could do with something to take the edge off? Yeah, occasionally, but it passes because I know that that ain't never going to happen. I've made a promise to myself, I've made a promise to Lincoln, I've made a promise to my family that that ain't never going to happen. And I never want it to happen. So I'm thinking of any of you out there who are struggling, just take strength that you at any age can turn your life around, believe you me. You know, I'm the sort of, I'm the, not the poster girl for it, but you know, if, if I can do it, anybody can do it, believe you me. But for me, it wasn't a higher power that stopped me drinking. It was willpower, but each to their own. Everybody has their different, their different anchor. And, um, and good, and good luck to you. But, um, anyway, thanks for listening. So guys, if there's anything that you've ever heard me talking about that you'd like to hear more of, or indeed anything you can suggest that me, DK and Lincoln can bring to the table, contact me on deniswelshpod at gmail.com. And um, indeed, if you've got any questions, ask away. We'd love to hear from you.